So today we're gonna talk about this thing. Now this is the infamous ZVS driver circuit and it can do all kinds of stuff like drive flyback transformers like this one or do induction heating. And at the same time it's as you can see quite simple yet very efficient. So let's take a look at this amazing circuit. Now this is a ZVS driver circuit I built. So let me show you the schematic and explain how it works and afterwards we're gonna do some testing with it and pull some arcs. So the circuit works in quite a simple way. We have these two resistors which are gonna supply some current to the gates of the transistors. Now if we turn on the supply these gates are gonna slowly charge but because no two transistors are exactly identical, one of the transistors is gonna turn on first. And let's say it's this one right here. So what's gonna happen now is that there will be a current flow through the transistor and this part of the primary coil back to the positive. And like that, the voltage on this coil is gonna rise. But at some point it has reached its peak and then it's gonna go down again. And on its way down, this diode right here discharges the gate of this transistor. And as soon as the zero crossing hits, this transistor should be completely off. But then the LC circuit wants to continue the current flow, and so it starts pushing the voltage up a bit, in this case now in the negative polarity. And like that, the gate of this transistor is gonna charge through this diode right here and at some point it will turn on. And at that point current can flow through this transistor and to this part of the coil, which then makes the voltage rise further in the negative polarity until it hits the peak. And afterwards it's gonna go down again and on its way down this diode right here is gonna discharge the gate of the transistor again. And as soon as the zero crossing hits, this transistor right here should be fully turned off. And then the entire cycle just repeats. Then the voltage will continue um, flowing in the circuit and then the gate of this transistor is gonna get charged by this diode right here. And it's gonna turn on and then current will flow through the coil again and the voltage will rise. At some point it has hit the peak, then it will go down again and on its way down the diode discharges the transistor again and as soon as the zero crossing hits the transistor is fully off and it switches again. And now you should be able to see why this circuit is so dependent on the resonance frequency of this LC circuit. Because the gates of the transistors are gonna be charging and discharging at the rate at which this LC circuit oscillates. And this is why you can change the frequency with the values of these components right here. And then besides all of that, we also have some protective Zener diodes here which prevent the gates from over voltage. And also these resistors which I would say are pull down resistors, but considering the fact that the diodes are discharging and charging the gates of the transistors, I'm not entirely sure what their purpose is, but it's probably some kind of pull down resistor, I would guess. And then here we have a 100 microhenry choke, and this choke just kind of limits the current flow in the circuit and prevents the transistors from dying. And since the entire current of the circuit is going to go through this choke, it should be rated at at least like 10 to 15 amps, because the ZVS circuit will draw high currents in its operation. Also, another important thing is these capacitors right here, because these capacitors have to handle massive amounts of current. Since you're in the LC circuit and they're oscillating huge amounts of energy. And this is why these capacitors have to be rated for this, otherwise they will overheat and potentially break. Now in my circuit I have these special MKP capacitors, which are rated for the high frequency as we can see here and they're also rated for a high voltage of up to 800 volts AC and 1200 volts DC which is important because the resonant voltages in this part of the circuit can be quite high. 
And for the capacitors, I would either choose MKP capacitors like Vima MKP capacitors, they should work. But the ones I found work best are actually some Chinese capacitors, which they use in all their Chinese ZVS driver kits. And so it might actually be worth just getting one of those cheap kits just to get the two capacitors. Because in my experience, those work the best and have the least heating. And when it comes to the cooling of the transistors, you usually don't really have to have a big heat sink since the circuit is quite efficient. In my case, I have this relatively small heat sink with a small thermal mass. Since I've mounted both transistors on one heat sink, they have to be insulated. Their bags have to be insulated. And this is why on one transistor here, I have this silicon thermal pad which insulates it from the heatsink itself. Otherwise the backs of the transistors will short and your circuit will not work. And yeah, now that's about it. That's all I can say about how I built my circuit. So let's do some oscilloscope measurements with the flyback connected since that is necessary because without the flyback we wouldn't have this coil right here and without this coil the circuit is not going to oscillate. So we're going to do that, we're going to do some scope measurements and look at the frequency and output of the circuit and then we're going to pull some arcs. Now I've just connected the oscilloscope probes to the primary of the flyback so that we can see the input waveform to the flyback. And also here we have a little gap so that an arc can strike there. So let's turn it on and as we can see we get a nice sinusoidal output with a frequency of about 52 kilohertz when the arc is struck. So now let me show you something quite interesting and that is what happens if we stretch out the arc and how the frequency changes with no arc. So let's do that. We stretch out the arc and the frequency drops to about 58 kilohertz. Now the arc breaks and now the frequency is just about 32 kilohertz. If we ignite it and basically short it, we, get, we see that we are at 52 again. And the more we stretch it out, the more the frequency drops. Which is kind of an interesting phenomenon which is caused by the self-oscillating nature of the circuit. Now here is a little close-up of the oscilloscope screen and if we turn it on again see that with a short arc we are at 52 kilohertz again and when we stretch it the frequency drops until it completely drops to 32 kilohertz with no arc. So now this is the part everyone has been waiting for and it's where I'm gonna draw the arcs. Now the power supply I used for this was supplying about 28 volts and the current consumption was about 11 amps. So the power was about 300 watts. And considering that the arcs are very hot and also reasonably long, I would say that's quite good. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the arcing. So yeah, this is all I've got for today. I hope it all made sense and that if you want to create your own ZVS, you can now do so. So remember to stay safe and keep exploring science. Science by Sergio, out.